do you love the most about Italy? The landscape, the culture, the food? My name is Vincenzo from the food blog Vincenzo's Plate and through eight foodie and adventure field days I'm going to unlock what I love, the secrets of the greenest region in the boot, my native Abruzzo, where I grew up. I now live in Australia and haven't been back for a couple of years. So not only will you get to meet my family and friends, but together we will cook and eat our way through some of the treasures of Italy's best kept secret. Welcome to Italian Explored with Vincenzo's Plate. Welcome to Abruzzo. As Abruzzo continues to amaze us, we journey a little further inland to the medieval town of Santo Stefano. Well, you can go a different way, but I'm going to get the difficult way. Taking a walk through it is like entering into an Italian fairy tale, where you step back in time and live like the locals once did. The highlight for many is the must-see Hotel Sextantio, which has rooms scattered all over the city. We enter into one before our next pit stop, which is a little more rustic and a lot more adventurous, located seemingly in the middle of nowhere. The art of Abruzzo, what a magical place. It's essentially a butcher with charcoal barbecues sitting amongst a 360 degree backdrop of the local mountains and endless greenery. This is a destination that will entirely blow away your senses. The flavors, the company, the sounds of nature, everything in sight. This episode ends a little closer to home, back in the kitchen with Vincenzo's nonna, where she shares her famous recipe for homemade gnocchi and sugo. Pillows of potato goodness like you've never tasted before invite us into Vincenzo's childhood. Today's destination breathes life into the notion that authentic Italian villages no longer remain. Santo Stefano is located 150 kilometers from Rome. It is a small, medieval town perched up high in the middle of one of Italy's national parks. Its beauty lies in the way it is structured, filled with old buildings and cobblestone paths. And until recent years, it was described as a ghost town with only 70 inhabitants. Today we are in this beautiful town called Santo Stefano di Sessano, <laughs> classified as a, one of the top 10 most beautiful borghi d'Italia, which means villages of Italy. A medieval town that um, has been untouched since the early ages. And um, what can we say about this place, uh, my darling? Well, after World War II, uh, a lot of the people that lived in the town emigrated. And so basically nothing needed to be restored. It's been left practically untouched, you could say. Yeah, yeah only a couple of things have been uh, done, like a couple of uh, agriturismo, but uh, the old town is really untouched. And these days, um, thanks to an investor, the town has been uh, kind of fixed, it's full of bed and breakfast, hotels, and the few locals that lived here, they uh, created souvenir stores and small shops, and they are proud to share their passion and their culture with you, with the world. And of course, one of the things that's produced quite a lot from the land here is very, very, very tiny lentils. So this is, this is a piece of the dried plant and they basically, it's very manual, but basically to get some of the lentils out. That's what uh, you do. That's, that's what you do. Yeah, that's what but, you do. <laughs> Well, it's Just not very it, easy. It sounds easy, no, it's but very it's not. Manual. It's a long process, but um, you have to discover. You come here, and then the people will explain to you how the lentils grow. The lentil here is famous for a reason. It's famous because they're very, very high in... in high in iron, and they're really, really tiny, so you can't actually find them, I don't think, in really anywhere else in the world. No. The way they cook lentil here is very, very simple. Lentil, extra virgin olive oil, the, the red garlic from Sulmona, which is very famous, and the bay leaf, nothing else. So let's go and see what else Santo Stefano has to offer. Mm -hmm. 
behind this tiny, tight wall, I don't know if I can fit, there is the center of this town. Let's go and visit it. Well, you can go to a different way, but I'm gonna get the difficult way. Yeah. Just a day is probably enough to see all of Santo Stefano, but not enough to understand it. Walking around and visiting the local trinket and produce stores is a must, and what you find might just surprise you. It's really friendly, with charming residents full of pride for their home. And what's captivating is that what has been fixed has only restored it back to what it once was, and that's the key. With no modern day characteristics, you feel like you're walking through the pages of the town's history book. Ciao. So these beautiful ladies are getting the amarene. Amarene, how can I explain amarene? They're like uh, sour cherries. And what they're gonna do with the amarene, with this, they're gonna make um, jam out of this, or they're making the ratafia, the classic um, liqueur, liqueur from here, uh, which you have to try if you come to Abruzzo. So that's another excuse to come to Abruzzo. Arrivederci, signore. Arrivederci. Grazie. Even the techniques used to make everyday objects, along with keepsakes, are derived from age-old crafts and traditions. Wooden household items and small toy animals are all handmade. Time-honoured recipes are also followed to produce an array of conserves, soups and other foods available to purchase. The highlight of the town, which you don't even realise you are passing in most instances thanks to its model, is the renowned hotel, which was purpose-built to assimilate guests in the village and local community. Hotel Sextantio is so unique. And when you come here, you got vino cotto, cooked wine, welcoming you to your room. And so, darling, what's the, what makes this place so special? The difference of this, because this is an hotel, but it's not an hotel where you go to the hotel, it's there. You go to the reception and, and what happened? And the rooms are divided among the entire town. So where, where we're positioned here, there's only two of the rooms. But then in other parts of the town, there's, there's rooms that have basically also been restored. We had to climb up a very, very small alleyway of stairs just to get up here. So it might be a little bit difficult if you bring too much luggage. But oh, it's yeah. pretty incredible once you've arrived. Now, I have to say a, a huge thanks to Daniele, who is um, half Italian, half Swedish. And this guy is not from Abruzzo. He came to Abruzzo to, with a motorbike to visit the region. While he was going on the Grand Sass of the mountain with the motorbike, he got lost. He got lost and he, he, he came here to Santo Stefano. And Santo Stefano was um, basically... Uh, Practically abandoned. Yeah, there was no one here. And, uh, he said, oh my God, this town needs to be known around the world. So he did invest millions of euro to make this town what it is today. Well, he and saw the opportunity that the town had to bring some tourists to the region. And thanks to its beauty and a very good amount of investment, he now welcomes, I imagine, thousands of tourists. From Japan, from Germany, from England, and you name it more, from around the world, you know? And this is beautiful. So big thanks to Daniele. Thank you, Daniele, for making this uh, place well known around the world. So even though people come from all over the world to visit this place, it's still not really that well known. I still think we can consider it a secret. It is definitely a secret. It's a secret for us and for those who came to definitely. visit. But for you who didn't, <laughs> And inside the rooms, it's just got, well, the bare necessities, let's say. The yeah. minimums, the essentials. There's a bath, a bed, absolutely no TV, so that all you can do is relax and actually enjoy time with your partner without technology. Yes, that's the best part of it. So, come here to Hotel Sextantio. Let's go to our room, darling. <laughs> Welcome to the Cantinone, which is the medieval canteen. And I believe uh, Lancelot, maybe, used to come here to drink some beer and meet some women, you know, used to love women. Let's go and see. So now we are in the cantina of the Hotel Sextantio. And the cantina is really a traditional cellar attached to a country house 
used to store food and wine. It's basically a cave, so we exactly. are underneath rocks. That's right. You come here in summer or winter, it's nice and cool. Imagine the prosciutto and the salami kept here in the winter time. How would that be? Well, exactly. Well, a long time ago, every, people used to store all of their food here. So that in the winter time, when it was really, really cold, they didn't have to go out and make or produce any of their food because it was stored really well here. It's like a giant fridge. Well, I would say cheers to this. Cheers. And the best part is that uh, in these days, we can experience this uh, amazing uh, atmosphere. Well, that's right. You can basically come here and eat traditional food that was cooked by, well, nonnies <laughs> a long time ago. Um, and they, they still produce it today to remind everyone how people once lived. And the, what about this uh, beautiful uh, stone fireplace? Yeah, it's really beautiful. All of these little holes that you can see here were where they used to keep the food really warm because all of the heat from the flames would obviously go up towards the holes and keep the food. Great, just like if you would, I don't know, keep something maybe warm in a hot oven that you turned mm. on. How delicious is that? So basically coming in this room, you just smell amazing food all the time, huh? And you're getting hungry now, aren't you? I am getting hungry now. So let's go and eat something. Let's go to Fonte Vetica, to Ristoro Mucciante. to Fonte Vetica and Ristoro Mucciante in the heart of Abruzzo. What a magical place. There's no need for description. Thanks to our motociclisti, our motorbike friends, bike friends, this is a place where people from Abruzzo or tourists, as you can see, the camper vans, they meet. They meet here, they go inside, you buy your meat, you buy your cheese, you buy your wine, and you cook it there. So let's go and explore Ristoro Mucciante together. In the late 70s, this structure stood as a humble shed and a High Fly movie production crew came across it and used it as a saloon for a Western film. Its location was ideal in so many senses and soon after, other film crews swarmed in and followed suit. Today, it's mostly frequented by cyclists, groups of motorbike riders and campers, providing them with the tastiest pit stop they could ever stumble across. So now, when you come to Ristoro Mucciante, you got these uh, beautiful gentlemen. They've been doing this since they were little. The meat is basically uh, meat that grows here. And we ordered some sausages. They're just going to cut them in half so it's easier to, to grill them. And we're going to get some arrosticini, some cheese and wine, because the arrosticini and the sausages are from here. That's what they're proud of. Can you tell these two guys, the twins? So, gemelli, ma voi che siete gemelli? Vuoi farmi una domanda? Ma chi la fa la carne migliore? Lui. Ah, lui? Decisamente io. Ah, sei modesto allora. Bravo. Sì, sì. Allora, un applauso al gemello. Let's go and cook them. After selecting your meat inside, you can use one of the many charcoal barbecues and grill up a feast. Yeah. So, Papa, che stiamo facendo oggi? Salsiccia, arrosto e carne di Rodolfo. Dice, homemade sausages from here. Look at this location, look where we are. Cooking with Dad. We have a friend from Belgium. Belgium. Say hello, Belgium. from Belgium. Hello. In Abruzzo. Bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. bonjour. And come here, come here. And here we have uh, the rosticini grill, see, the rosticini grill with Zio, Zio Fausto and Zio. Allora, le rosticini le fatti tu? Si, fatti a mano. Da Rodolfo. Da Rodolfo. And here we are having a good time with uh, Zio's friend in this beautiful location. So, what more do you want? We need an Abruzzo. A maggiore rosticini. A maggiore rosticini. Zio still.
No, from this beautiful uh, situation, what can we say? Visit Abruzzo, come here to a land of beautiful people and beautiful food. So, thank you. We'll see you very soon. E ora si mangia Vincenzo Infamous Abruzzo skewers made from carefully diced sheep meat are practically available on tap. These, along with fresh pork sausages, are the traditional selection and our choice of cuts for the day. And we're certainly not short of hungry mouths to feed. Eating in this setting is an invitation by nature to be one with it and enjoy an absolute feast with whatever company you choose to bring along. No matter which way we look, there are uninterrupted views of the highest mountain peaks, reminding us that we are experiencing just another postcard moment in Abruzzo, both tasty and picturesque. Hi, and welcome to... Vincenzo's flight. <laughs> Bravissima. She's got the English accent, well done. <laughs> Today we are making gnocchi, non as gnocchi. They are called gnocchi alla terra mana, which is from uh, the city where Nonna is from. The indirect, they're called surgit because they are very different to the original, to the classic gnocchi that people eat around Italy. Allora, nonna, cosa ci serve per fare gli gnocchi? Allora, In my serve. opinion, probably the best, but I don't want to say that, but they are amazing. So tell us, nonna, che ci serve? Allora, ci serve un chilo di patate, tre etti di farina, un uovo, per il sugo la cipolla, la carota, poi si mette il sugo, il sedano, il basilico, il sale, e si fa cucinare. So now nonna is checking if the potatoes are ready. She's stirring them and checking them with the hands, but you can use a fork to check. And uh, when they're ready, you don't want them to be too soft, otherwise they, they become mushy. Let's wait a couple of minutes and then we're ready to start making gnocchi. Now it's time to make the tomato sauce for the gnocchi. Put a nice amount of extra virgin olive oil. Nonna used a homemade extra virgin olive oil. You can see it's nice and beautiful and dark. Then you make the extra virgin olive oil nice and warm. And then you put the carrots and the, and the onion. It's one carrot cut into pieces and uh, the onion it's also cut into pieces. You don't need much onion, maybe about a quarter or even less than that. But when the potatoes are ready, you shred them out and then you put straight in the pasta patate. And again, you break them. Okay. And you do this. And the patate breaks. So spread the potatoes out so that they get cold, they cool down. Because now it's very important that we make the, the potatoes cold. Once they get cold, then you can start making the gnocchi. Don't make the mistake to make the gnocchi when the potatoes are still hot. So basically the potatoes cook for 10 minutes. Not much. Vero, nonna? <laughs> so once the carrot and onion uh, are cooked, you put the tomato. The tomato, of course, is made by nonna. It's all made. Everything is on made here. And then you put the celery and the basil inside because that's what, that gives the flavor to the tomato sauce. The celery stick, you remove it when the sauce is ready. And then you put a nice big amount of uh, sale grosso, which is sale sea grosso. salt, oh, rock salt. Si deve the smell in this kitchen is, uh, is Nonna's kitchen, which is... Uh, you can only smell it here. I will never be able to make this in Australia because it's, it's nonna. <laughs> we are making all of this and we have a supervisor here. A supervisor who is 96 years old. And you know what that means? That we have to make this perfectly. Otherwise, <laughs> she will get upset. <laughs> so now we make a hole in the middle of the potatoes because the potatoes are nice and cold. You put an egg inside. Make sure you wash your hands after you touch the egg, and then you start making the dough. So the, the well is made. Inside the well, you beat the egg uh, very well. You start mixing it. I love the way Nonna does it. Look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful the hands are, look. Then you put the farina inside. You put the flour. 
The flour we are using is just a plain flour. A good quality one, of course. Massage the dough as much as possible and have fun. Now, keep some flour next to you. See, Nona is using a little bit of extra flour uh, because if you feel like the flour is too soft, you want to add a little bit, not too much, just see as you go. The flour is good because the flour actually clean your hands, and um, it's the easiest way to keep your hands clean, and it will help rolling the dough. So you will basically want to use the top part of your fingers to massage and press hard, but not too hard. Look at this, look at this. That's what you want to get, look. It's like a, oh, no, you can play with it. <laughs> Look at this beautiful technique. Look like little snakes. Gnocchi snakes. So the way Nona makes the gnocchi, as you can see, is a diagonal cut. And uh, they don't look like normal gnocchi. Like I said, it, they're called surgit. Look how quick. Con questo si fa. Così. Eh. Allora non stai a fare bene. Perché? Perché no? Vedi come lo stai a fare. Non ha rules. She said I'm not doing it well. Dai, tu non lo sai fare, lo ah. faccio io, vai, vai. Eh, that's true. Dai, She said molto brutto. <laughs> She said it's ugly and I don't know how to do it. Hai visto? Guarda là, guarda là come si fa. You are right, Con nonna. questo si fa, nonna. Only use this part to do it. Più, più storti il coltello. Ok. Eh. Ora cuciniamo gli gnocchi, nonna, dai. Siamo pronti? Eh. And now we put the gnocchi inside. Vai, nonna. Butto. So now the gnocchi are coming up. We want to wait for all of them to come on top and then we start getting them. Adesso sta a risalire su gli gnocchi perché Come risale, deve bollire due o tre minuti e poi si spegne. So, you, know, you get a nice big bowl, you put the tomato at the bottom, you put a little bit of parmigiano on top, just to give the flavor, and then we can put the gnocchi inside. So, the gnocchi are ready. E eh, questo mo sarà bollito, io lo spengo, ci metto un pochino questi, che così non, non si ammolle, con un po' d'acqua fredda non, non diventa molle. Quindi, così, poi lo facciamo. Aspetta, si fa scolare bene. Mmm, wow, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah, look, nonna's gnocchi, gnocchi sono forever. Belli, sono molto bellissimi, nonna. Belli. belli come te, nonna, belli come te. Parmigiano first, lots of tomato sauce now, because now we have to mix it very, very well. That's the way you make pasta, that's the way you make gnocchi. And now you stir it. Well, now it's time for us to enjoy the gnocchi alla teramana, risurgit, with tomato sauce. So, thank you so much for watching this uh, show. Nonna, c'è qualcosa che vuoi dire ai nostri amici? Eh, venite in Abruzzo che vi cucino io. <laughs> oh, wow. Allora, mangiamo, nonna. Buon appetito. E ora si mangia? Buon appetito. Vincenzo's plate. Vincenzo's plate. Mmm! 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 The queen of the chefs, the best in the world. Grazie, Nona. Prego. Grazie a te. Today, welcome to Santo Stefano. Di Sessania. Sessanio. <laughs> I am welcome to... Vincenzo's plate. <laughs> brava, Nona, brava. Today we are making gnon. Uh, food. Uh. Okay, okay. <laughs> Last one. <laughs>